Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Mohamed uh, Siba, the leader of the National Democratic Alliance, uh, the NDA party of uh, Sierra Leone. Uh, let me wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in advance. A new year full of hope and joy with many God's richest blessings to you all. I have in the past added my name and voice to the conversation of a more inclusive democratic Sierra Leone with an end to the politics of ethnicity. I have also expressed my unwavering support and commitment to a more sustainable, free, and quality education that guarantees every child the right to basic learning. And why I still see a more hopeful and a more brighter future for Sierra Leone. I will not relent, however, to speak about the things that are wrong and why it is so urgent for us to work together to build a more secure, safer, stable, and a prosperous Sierra Leone. And I am passionately doing so with a sense of patriotism and a solemn obligation to our nation. Because the price we pay for not speaking are far too greater than articulating the rightful indignation of our fight for social justice the rule of law, economic opportunities, and the preservation of the principles of good governance. All of us must stand up together by appealing to the conscience of this new political leadership today that we resist the politics that favors only those who happens to be members and patrons of the Sierra Leone People's Party. We, as citizens, are tired of the arguments of the moral equivalency that because of the past misdeeds of the APC, the SLPP bears no blame and no responsibilities for committing the same ethnic transgression and political patronage that we see. The moment of opportunities are not bestowed to those who won the elections of 2018 alone, our historic destiny are mutually and collectively tied together. And whatever affects SLPP directly affects every Sierra Leonean anywhere. And the political mandate given to President Bill is one to lead and help bring prosperity to our beloved country. And so as we begin the new year, we must avoid the characters that define our animosity and our prejudice against our own citizens who live on opposite sides of the country and who live on, on different economic ladders of opportunities. These unnecessary temptations of revenge of retribution and the lack of empathy for one and other should vanish from the hearts and minds of every public servant in Sierra Leone. Certainly, we can prevent the sporadic violence we periodically experience today since the election and the agony of the unbearable hardship when we look at creating economic investments from our marine resources to our agricultural landscape, from our mineral wealth to our tourism potentials. These are resources we can utilize to build our country. And as we pass legislation to set up an anti-corruption commission, we must lay the groundwork of rebuilding 
our democratic institutions and fighting against the conditions that create poverty in the first place. We will fail to rebuild if we choose to target and marginalize our citizens because of their political affiliation and ethnicity. There are no winners when we have some of our citizens who enjoy prosperity and many of our people who experience hardship. When our brothers and sisters from the South are no different from our brothers and sisters from the North. When those in the East and the West, Western part of the country, our brothers and sisters from the same heritage and culture. We are no different than the passport we carry and the nationality that bind us together. So this idea of a red Sierra Leone and a green Sierra Leone is a fruitless illusion that must be replaced by our common loyalty to our flag and to our nation. Our national leadership must seize that opportunity and realize that when they abandon the sacred ideals and principles of our constitution, a crime against the state is being committed. The greatest threat to our democracy today is not only corruption and greed, but apathy indifferences and the self-denial that tribalism does not exist in Sierra Leone, that it is something other people do and not us. This is nothing but reversing the same pattern of discrimination that was done in the past. We must therefore collectively eradicate this menace if we are to truly succeed as a nation. And honestly, too many of our citizens are becoming victims of what they accidentally happens to be. That the region they grew up and the language they speak has now become a death sentence to them. The frequent firing of our brothers and sisters from the North a prelude to political instability and the shameful burden of what tribalism can do. This is a betrayal of common decency and fairness that denies individuals the right to the pursuit of happiness and their common livelihood. This is wrong. And I urge President Bill to reverse this trend of social injustice that is keeping us on the bottomless pit of poverty. I happen to know President Bill, who is a kind and patriotic Sierra Leonean. In many of my political engagement with him during consultative meeting, as a former presidential candidate myself and prior to signing the Freetown Peace Agreement at the Radisson Blue before the March 7, 2018 election, I found him to be a man of compassion, a man whose heart is in the right place. But the political culture that is driving his party is too ethnic in scope and partisan in practice with some ill-motivated extremists who are seriously misguiding him. While I personally abhor the democratic assault that was perpetrated in the well of parliament during the speakership battle earlier this year, the SLPP continues to undermine public trust and public confidence, including its ability to govern with wisdom and sincerity. And the recent pay raise for members of parliament is nothing 
but a serious misplacement of national priorities. Those who are supposed to pass laws and legislations that will increase wages for citizens, bring in new multinational investment, and allocate resources and revenues to improve the common welfare of Sierra Leoneans are themselves fighting for their own heads and throwing our peaceful citizens under the bus. This is shameful and reckless. The people of Sierra Leone deserve better and President Bio must fight for the average citizen. On the other hand, however, I will be biased if I do not give this new government some of its noticeable and deserving accomplishment in the interest of fairness. There has been strong international diplomacy that is restoring the long alliances of cooperation and building investment opportunities. President Bio's remarkable speech at the United Nations General Assembly earlier this year was a call to Africa's new rise of global leadership. At home, we are seeing the restoration of order and discipline in public institutions, a huge revenue mobilization, and the unveiling of the free quality education that is creating widespread access and opportunities, opportunities for our children. The relentless effort of the government to keep our national soccer team on, Af on the Africa's Nations Cup was a hallmark of good statemanship. The national cleaning exercise also is indeed a good public hygiene that promotes public health. I personally and heartily welcome the new commission that will be looking at peace building and the promotion of national cohesion. I hope that this effort will undo the serious ethnic and political division that continues to undermine the peace and stability of our country. Finally, our obligations must not be surrendered to political parties or an ethnic group, but to Sierra Leone, the very citizenship that we inherently have, that guarantees us the right that we enjoy today. President Bio must know that the seat he occupies today was once held by notable and honorable Sierra Leoneans who made a lot of sacrifice to protect our liberty, our freedom, and our sovereignty. He must be a man who sees no region, no tribe, no gender, and no political affiliation when it comes to our beloved Sierra Leone. All of us have a patriotic responsibilities to do the same. Let us begin the new year afresh with an open mind of love and a deep loyalty and commitment to our homeland. Our patriotic instinct must not only define what kind of Sierra Leone we want to build and what kind of Sierra Leoneans that we are, but must transcend every interest as we look forward into the new future and into the new year. Happy New Year to you all. God bless you and may God bless the Republic of Sierra Leone. Thank you very much.